Okay, All right, cool. so um, this class is a recorded class. And today we're going to be working on uh, some really beautiful pendant necklaces made with Super Duo seed beads. And um, the thread path for these is really refreshing. It's um, one of those uh, thread paths that's easy to do. And you can make lots of them really fast. And there's two different ways you can finish it. You can finish it with a chain or you can create this really beautiful beaded look, which is completely customizable. And uh, I'm hoping we can have time to go through building the pendant twice, and then we can show um, how to do each of the chain styles. So that's my goal for tonight. And I'm gonna see if I can, if I can get to that in that order. And uh, feel free to ask questions during the class. And um, again, the class is recorded. There will be a replay available at michaels.com classes. And um, thank you everyone again for being here. So I'm gonna get started with the materials. So shown here is one of my samples and it is made with, it's on wildfire beading thread. It's the, um, the 0 0.006 and I used size 12 beading needles and um, regular scissors just to cut the thread. And so for um, completing the ending, depending on the ending that you're going to use, you might need some chain and any chain that you like is fine. And wire guardians and a findings pack are also options that you may or may not need depending on what you decide to do for your finish. And for the seed beads, you're going to need some Super Duo beads in any color, some size 10 seed beads also in any color that you'd like. And then there are some four millimeter crystals and you have lots of options there. Um, the ones that I'm using are from the strong wall and they come in a lot of different colors. So I've done a few samples here in the gray, for example, the one I just showed is gold super duos with the gray, really pretty. Um, this comes with a lot of beads, but you would only need the small strand with the four millimeters on there. And so tonight I'm gonna to be working with because I'm gonna use the colors that look so nice on our camera. I'm gonna be working with red. So let me see if I can find those. This beautiful red color here. I have a lot of um, sparkle. They are, they're very beautiful under this light. So I thought we'd use those. And in the instructions, it says to cut about 90 inches of thread. And that is for making the chain version. So where you're going to, sorry, we're going to make the, the beaded chain, the one that looks like this. So 90 inches leaving a 36 inch tail, if you want to do this version. If you're going to add chain here, you can go with about 60 inches and that will work out just fine. Okay, so I'm cutting my thread. And I'm going to use the, um, I've got some pliers here. These are just some flat nose pliers that I'm using to flatten the end of the wildfire. So it makes it easier for me to thread my needle. I got a needle ready. All right. And so here's the secret of those. Some size 10 beads. And then I've got handy some already ready to go crystals here, crystal rondelles. I love these little containers, they're really handy. Okay, and so to get started, you're gonna create a stop bead. So pick up one of the size 10 beads and slide it down. If you're doing the, um, the version where you're gonna stitch a chain, leave a 36 inch tail or 30 inches, something like that enough to go up and down again from the, you know, the pendant to where you're going to put the clasp on one side and back. Um, if you're making the version with the chain, you only need about a 10 to 12 inch tail. So coming back through that size 10 seed bead and pull pretty tight and I've got a stop bead. And so I'm going to build the first, the first segment or the first row. 
by picking up one super duo. Slide that down. And then one of the four millimeter crystals, crystal rondelles. And then I'll need a super duo, a size 10 seed bead, and a super duo. And I'm going to repeat that four more until I have five crystals and four of these segments, these repeats right here. So four of those and five crystals. And in between each crystal is one of these repeats. Super duo 10, super duo. This is a really cool color. I like it. And this pattern, I feel like it's one that is um, still, it's very customizable for color. You could add, like each layer could have different colors and it would look really neat. So I'm excited to see what everybody comes up with. Okay, and there's my, let's see, one, two, three, fourth of those. I need one more crystal. And then I'm gonna end with one super duo bead. So I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go over that one more time. We have a super duo, a crystal, and then one of those repeats, crystal repeat, until we end with a crystal and a super duo. So I should have something that looks like that. And I'm gonna use gravity to help me make a turn. And so um, last week I was asked about super duo, so I'm just gonna quickly go over what a super duo is. At the, at the time I was making this, I was just stringing through, it didn't matter which hole I chose, but there's two holes in a super duo bead. And so I strung through one side and just kind of lifted it up to make them all go in the same direction. But now I'm gonna start using the other hole in that bead to make a turn so I can go back this way and add all of the rest of the you know, pieces. And I want it to stay kind of tight. So I'm gonna pick it up and just go through the top hole of that super duo bead. This is the last one that we added. And that just helps it stay a little bit tight. Another way you could tighten it up if you want is you could come back over here to where the stop bead is and just give it a pull. And that helps too. Okay, and so for this part, if you're seeing a rondelle, that's the time we're gonna add one of the, the repeats. So a super duo in the size 10 and a super duo. And I'm gonna go through the top hole of that next super duo bead. And pull tight. And it should sit right below the rondelle, this little segment we made. And so for this next spot, I'm gonna put one super duo. And then the repeat again, super duo and the 10 and super duo bead. Coming through the next one. And I'm gonna repeat that all the way to the end here. So for this next part, one super duo bead. So you can see how fast this stitches up. It's a really quick project. It's just another little segment. Oops. A little tangles there. There we go. And one more of these. So fun working with super duos because there's so many ideas even on a project that i've done a bunch of times just sitting here right now like oh i should try that you can you can layer them up so so many ways there's so many possibilities 
You'll see you guys, when you guys are working on this, you'll be like, oh yeah, I can do that or that. So there's that last segment. And you'll start to see this little kind of fan shape taking, taking form. And if you need to, you can always tighten it again. I usually put the stopper bead under my thumbnail and just kind of pull if you feel like it needs it. Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is make a turn. And I'm gonna turn through the top hole of the last Super Duo bead that we added. So just going through that first Super Duo, through the top hole, we added this, this bead through the bottom one and we're just turning and then just going through the top one. And so now we need more crystals. So I'm gonna pick up one of these four millimeter rondelles and then just go through the top hole of the next uh, Super Duo. And so for this part, let's see, I might turn it this way so I can work it a little bit easier. I just kind of rotated the piece. And I'm gonna add one Super Duo going through the top hole of the next one. One more, going through the top hole of the next one. And this is where I feel like this has a refreshing thread path because very often with like a super duo project, you have to weave, you know, with your needle through a lot of the um, back through the beadwork. And that can be really challenging once it's gotten tighter. So I got the idea to add the point now instead of coming back in around three. So during this first row, I'm gonna make a turn. So I just added this is the super duo I just added, see? It's loose. And that's the one I just pulled in. And it's through the bottom hole. And I'm gonna turn and go through the top hole. And this saves a lot of effort just doing this one little step here. Cause you won't have to come back later and add it. So now there's one more super duo. Go through the top hole, the next one. And there's the first point. And now I'm just gonna weave through. I'm going to weave through the top hole of this bead, the bottom hole of that one, the top hole of this one, and the bottom hole of that one, and then keep going. So here's what that looks like. Turning, going through. Each of those. And that should put you in position to add your next rondelle. So I'm picking up one more crystal here. And there, one point done. So now it's just repeating that, you know, to the end. So there's Super Duo. One more. Oops. And I'm going to make that turn again. Pick up one more super duo, going through the other hole of the next super duo, and then I'm going to come back up. There we go. Another crystal. Go through the next one. So just kind of a good, you know, a good little pattern with um, not too many steps to remember because there's, you know, a repeat of the same. Really, there's only like three steps, I feel like. So now I'm making that turn again. I'm going to go a little faster. I added another super duo and I'm gonna make a turn back. Going to the bottom hole, top hole, bottom hole, top hole in the bottom. Of those next, how many is that? One, two, three, four. 
Oh, there's an X5. So you'll go through a total of five super duos after you add the last point. So there's one more crystal. And I haven't tried this with just like, you know, like a regular four millimeter round, but in theory, I think it would work. And I have some really pretty four millimeters that they're kind of like a shell color. And I was thinking of trying that with copper super duo. I'm really feeling like, you know, beach colors and those kind of things sound really great to me right now. So you might be seeing me post that. I'm making that turn. Added the point, and I'm gonna come back through these five. Just making that turn. Through all five of those. You won't be able to get through all of them, you know, in one in one um one needle through. You'll have to keep going like I did there, but it's still pretty easy to get that done. Last crystal. And that's the whole pendant that quick. So really easy, nice design. And now the only decision is, do I want to add chain or do, oops, sorry. Or do I want to add, you know, um, a pretty ending like this? And so I thought I'd start with chain first so that you guys can see that. And again, any chain that you have laying around is great or that you want to use. And there's probably more than one way to do this. The way that I thought looked cool, and you can try it and see if you like it too. Or try, you could even just make a loop here and then attach a jump ring. But what I did is I added two size tens. And I'm exiting right from where I left off, added rondel, went through the super duo, and put on two tens. And I'm just gonna go through my chain. And the chain I'm using is closed, meaning these links are not open. If you're using um, a chain that's open, uh, it's a little more tricky because your thread can pull through it. If you have like a closed jump ring, that's one way you could get around that. But what I did is I went through my closed chain and I'm just gonna go through the, the 10 that I added second. I'm not gonna go through the first one, just that second one. I'm just pulling tight there. And I'm going to pick up one more a new size 10 bead. And come down through this next part right here. So I went through the top hole, and now I'm going through the bottom hole of the super duo below it. So both of these. And it gets the chain on there pretty nicely. And it, mean, it makes it easy to reinforce. Just come back up. I'm changing direction now. I went down through that part of the super duo and I'm gonna go through the top hole of it. I'm just gonna come back up through the first one. I was trying to get through both, but it's already starting to get a little tight. Do that again. I found two reinforces of this to be plenty. This is a very light pendant and the 0.06 wildfire is pretty strong. If you can get a third pass through and you feel like better about that, go for it. But mine starts to get tight after two. And I felt like it was pretty strong. So I went through that 10. I'm going to go through the other one. There we go. Down to the super duo. And there's nothing left to do but weave it in. So there's one side attached. And what I would do is measure it, decide how I want it to look, maybe attach findings, and then come along and, and do that other side in the same way using the tail. And you, what you would do there is pull off the stop bead and repeat what we just did here using the tail thread. And to weave in, 
There's lots of options. At the moment, I'm exiting from this super So I'm gonna just keep going. Actually, where am I? Yeah, I'm going through that one. So I'm gonna go through and just kind of weave around wherever is easy. I'm gonna go path of least resistance. So not wanting to break a bead or have to really put too much pressure on it. So go through a few more. When I get to that point, I might make a turn. And I pulled my stop bead off over here, so it's gonna start to, it's gonna give me a little bit more room for weaving around. And I'm gonna turn to that top bead there. Maybe go back down. And that's that's really all you gotta do. And you can tie off at any point you'd like from there. I changed direction three times. Um, knots aren't necessary, but if you wanted to, you could just grab your thread bridge kind of like this, come back through and tie what's called a half inch knot, which is where you pull a loop, come up through the loop and pull tight. And you get a little snapping noise. I always like to go through one more bead after I've done that to secure my knot. It's starting to get really tight. There we go. And then I'll just trim it. Scissors right here. All right. So that's side one. I'm checking the time here. We're doing really great for time. I can show putting the chain on the other side and probably still have time to start another one, or I can move on to showing the other chain. Danielle. Hey, Carmi. I'm, I'm going to recommend that. I think, I think adding the chain makes sense. Okay. Um, you go to the beaded chain, which is a little bit more complicated. So you mean um, string on, um, go ahead and attach this one now? Or go or ahead and start, start, start the, the second one. version. Yes. Yeah, because I feel like this one makes makes a lot of sense and, it, and it's pretty easy. So this other style for putting chain on, it takes a little bit more, um, you know, more work and more time. It takes longer to make this chain than it does to make the entire pendant, but it's so beautiful. And so where I am right here on this piece is right where we left off before, you know, where we added the last rondelle, right? This is just my tail side with the stop bead still attached. Let me tighten it up a little bit. And so to build that chain in the style that I did here, you'll just wanna pick up two size 10 beads, slide those down thread is caught on my keyboard. <laughs> so here we go. And this is um, up to you, but um, what I did in both of these designs is I alternated a four and a six millimeter rondelle spaced by two size 10 seed beads until I got to the part where I just did the seed bead chain. So I'm just going to do that same thing again here. Got a four and two beads. And here's another rondelle, but this time it's a six millimeter. And that's just for, for look. You could use any bead you want and any size that you want. And you could even kind of experiment with spacing it out. Like I've got two seed beads in between each ad. You could space that out, make it three, four, depending on how many beads you have too. Sometimes I don't have enough. So like with, um, here's a good example. With this one, I ran the, run, the, the crystals all the way up. And then this one, I just ran them up a quarter of the way. And they both look really nice. But I was running out of the grays. So lots of options and ideas to play with. Two more here. I'm going to just make this a shorter version of the chain. 
But what you would do is you repeat that to the link that you like. And when you reach the spot where you want to switch to making just seed beads, from that spot, pick up two beads and then pick up repetitions of six until you reach your desired length. So I'll probably just do four repeats of that. Oops, if I can find my beads here. <laughs> so I've got one too many. So there's one repeat of six. And there's two. There's three. And there's four. Okay, and when you reach that spot, go ahead and pick up a wire guardian. If, um, if you don't want to use a wire guardian, you could just add four more size six seed beads in place of it. But the wire guardian, I like using it because it's, you know, it's a really strong connection. And it also helps with not having to count back, you know, okay, these were my first four and then those were my six. Okay, so from here, pick up just five of the size 10 beads this time. So I've got five on the needle. And skip the next five here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and go through the sixth bead. And try to keep it as tight as you can. And that first little segment will look like that. And we're going to repeat that down to down to here. So I'm picking up five more. There's five. And this is just the, the counts that I chose. This kind of pattern, it can be made with any counts that you like. As long as they're consistent, it will look really neat. So I'm skipping five, going through the sixth one. And why I'm doing this is it, um, it gives you a way to weave in and it adds strength to your chain. And the reason that I didn't just do crystals all the way up, you know, to the wire guardian is that, um, well, a couple of reasons it saves crystals so that I have, you know, extra to work with on other projects, but also the crystals, um, when you start getting them higher than the collarbone, they can maybe get a little scratchy or, you know, cause they're faceted. So this just is a softer, kind of like finish for wearing. So I've got five on there, skipping five, and I'm going through the sixth one, hopefully. <laughs> there we go. And I've got one more repeat left to go. There's five on the needle. I'm going to skip five and go through the sixth. And at this point, I can just keep going. So I have um, two below that. I'm going to go through all the seed beads and rondelles. So hopefully it'll let me. Yeah, there it goes. And so there's a short version of what the longer chains look like and how they're made. And I'm going to reinforce it. So I'm going down to the last rondelle. And you want to exit from the last rondelle bead, pick up two more size tens. And now you'll want to go through the top hole of, sorry, the bottom hole of that next super duo. So there's one way you could do the chain. And another way you could do it is if you didn't mind weaving around, you could weave to exit from here and make them surround that top super duo. So it just depends what you like the look of 
and how you want your design to be. And so I've got lots of time to repeat. I could repeat this again and show the design again. Um, hey, Danielle, it's Carmi. Hey. I think, for, I think for everybody tonight, the most important thing is the focal. Okay. And it will not hurt anybody seeing you build that one more time. Awesome. Maybe I'll switch the colors out just for interest. I have another set of, um, let's see really quick. I could switch to some turquoise rondelles and we could work with some red super dos. A pretty lava red. Oh, they're bright. They're great. Are they good? Cool. And then I've got um, turquoise size tens. Danielle, could you um, give everyone a sense because um, they're looking at a picture. How big is the focal part of the necklace now that it's made? Is it about two and a half inches wide? Oh, let's measure it. I think I have a, a measure from handy. Let's take a look. So um, from point to point, which is the widest spot here to here, just a hair under two inches. Perfect. And yeah, height about one and a quarter. Not too big. It could be an earring if you wanted it to be. Well, I definitely don't want to distract you, but some of your season beaters are already trying to figure out if they made three focals, how they would possibly join them together so that. Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's really, another really doable. Yeah, actually, it's, I think it'd be really easy just to do by skipping, instead of putting a rondelle here, put a super duo and then another on top of it and just start another repeat from there. So we want somebody to try that and uh, tag us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've got my needle ready. I'm gonna cut more thread. I'll go just a little bit faster this time, if that's okay with you guys. But just so we can see it and, you know, see it in another color, that's always fun. I think what's cool about this design is you can really change it up and you can have it, you know, you can put the chain in a different spot, you can put um, ear wires on it, you can put chain and then hook the chain to an ear wire. I want to see that repeat now. <laughs> That's actually got me very intrigued. Might have to try it. I also like to see it with pearls instead of the crystal. So, so many things, so little time, right? If you guys are like me, you could probably beat all day, but eventually it's like, do I have to do other stuff too? No. What? Hmm, I'm kind of wishing I used a different seed color. Good still. Okay. I'm making for a messy bead mat later, guys. There's going to be some bead soup here, but I wanted to show you. This is going to look really weird, but I'm thinking just so we can see everything apart from each other. But yes, I'm using orange. Okay, so I added a super duo and now I need one rondelle bead. So another four millimeter rondelle. Okay. And then a super duo, a size 10 and a super duo. And is that orange not enough contrast, I wonder? That would be better. And I like it more too. Now we got something. Oh, you guys should see when I'm designing. I'm just like, I change the color so much. I'll make something halfway through and pull it apart. No joke. Because I change my mind about colors. I just love colors. And so one more four millimeter here, and that's the repeat. We'll have we'll have five crystals with a repeat in between each one. And when I say repeat, I mean the super duo, the ten, and the super duo. Here's the crystal. Oh, 
Okay, one more crystal and one more super duo. Oops. That's really cute. Then I'm gonna make a turn. Make sure I got my counts right. Yeah, I've got four of these. Make sure you've got four of these and five crystals. Making that turn through the top hole or bottom hole, depending on, I guess you should say it's the bottom since it's pointing down this way. And now I'm gonna put a super duo and 110 and a super duo bead and then go through the bottom hole of the next one, the next Super Duo bead. And then that's where you put that repeat underneath each of the crystals. When you're underneath just the size 10 bead, just put um, one of the Super Duos and go through the next one. So I'm gonna repeat that to the end. Going to the next super duo bead. Might need to tighten it a little bit. There we go. It was all spun there. Okay, just one more of these. This colorway with, um, I'm using that iris brown, with this lava, like red color. We did that during Super Duo September for like a fall spin on the design. It was gorgeous. And it was combined with some of the gold Super Duos. So if you haven't seen that colorway, definitely check that out because it it's really inspiring, even for summer, I feel like. And when you pull turquoise into it, which I hadn't done before until tonight, that's really neat looking. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting braver with color. Like, I always want to try something that I wouldn't have tried before. I used to stick to, you know, my matching, kind of matchy style. But how cool is that? That looks really neat. All right. And even that right there, I mean, that's a pretty design. So turning, going through the bottom hole of that last bead that we added. Okay, and now I need another crystal. So four millimeter rondelle, going through the next, what's it called, a super duo. I'm forgetting the name here. And I'm gonna pick up a super duo bead and go through the bottom hole of the next one. One more. And this is where we're gonna make that turn. It's a really easy turn. And just come through the bottom hole of that last one you added and pick up one more super duo, bottom hole of the next super duo. And then we're gonna make a turn through the bottom hole of the one above it. And I sometimes make mistakes and go through just this one. So I always try to make sure I've, I've gone through this one. I've done that a couple times where I didn't catch all the beads right. I'm continuing to go through all five of these beads. So this one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Alternating from bottom to the top, bottom to the top. So there's one of the little points. I'm gonna pick up a rondo and go through the next one here. I'm doing that same thing again with the next super duo and then making the turn. Pick up one more.
And then I'm going to turn and go through all five. And usually when I'm doing this, I can only get through two at a time. It's kind of holding true right now. Okay. Gotta find a rondelle here. <laughs> so here's one. There. Crystal. Oh, nope. <laughs> Whoops. Getting ahead of myself. Make the turn and add that point. I was getting into the speed mode there. All right. Oh, look, I got through three. <laughs> That's great. Saves a little bit of time. It's tight though. There we go. Crystal. Now I can add the crystal. And one more, one more point to add, and then we're good. Got that ready. Make that turn. Okay, and then I'm going to come back up through all five of these. This also serves a really nice purpose of um, tightening up that point, so you don't have a bunch of loose beads. Oh, I got through three again. That's pretty cool. Okay, last rondo. And now that I'm over here, I was thinking I'd show one more thing. So um, on the last one, when I was adding both the, let's see, where's that other sample I had? Both of the chains and this style I add, and hmm, here it is. And on this one, I kind of, I added them over here, but if you wanted them to sit over here, you could do that. And here's how to get there. It's just a little bit extra stuff, but it's not, it's not too tricky. But so from where I am here, I could turn this way. So I just went through the bottom hole of the speed. And I think in, in the instructions, this is actually, it's um, a thread pathed out in there for you to see, but this will enable you to get over here. And the great thing about that is that's where your other thread is already left off too. And so you could start adding your chain or creating your beaded chain from this spot. And so I was wondering, which one do you guys want to see again? We've got enough time for me to show maybe both, but I could prioritize one and see how we do. What do you think? Danielle, I think the chain makes sense. Yeah. And um, you have an interesting thing happening on the sidebar tonight. So we have <laughs> lots, lots of new people and lots of um, uh, regulars. Uh, oh, your regulars, they definitely see that if you went all the way around and made the complete circle, you have the most fabulous earrings ever invented. So oh, yes. I think maybe when you, um, when you have time tonight, maybe you want to make a circle and post it on um, your Instagram page uh, for okay. people to see. But I think um, with the time that we have left, the, the hardest thing to learn is how to make the beaded part of the necklace. So sure. show that part again, and then I think we're great. Yeah, let's do it. So, um, and that's a, a great thing to, to get to show it from this position because that's what I, I just realized as I was going through it. You can place your chain here or here on top of that super duo or on top of kind of straddling those two. Both look great, but one will give you a different lay, like um, the way it'll wear. If you're gonna wear it really long, you probably wanna put your chain here. And if you're gonna wear it shorter, putting it over here might make more sense. It's just something to play with, something to check out when you're working and, and decide what you like the most. But so um, I'm gonna show it this way, two tens. And same pattern, I'm gonna go the same pattern that I did before. But of course, 
feel free to change that up and it will look great. If I did a um, four millimeter, oops, um, six millimeter and then four millimeter, just up as high as I wanted to or has as many beads as I had. So there's that. I'll just do a few more here. All right. And so I added two more tens here. So it's it's basically two tens rondelle, two tens rondelle, all the way up. Add your last two tens, and then start adding repeats of six to the length that you'd like it to be. So that is um, six size ten beads, and just repeat that until you have the working length that you'd like. I always have to check my counts lately. I don't know why. I just I always double check them. Let's see, there's six. And like, even when I'm not live, I still have to double check it. It's a new thing. Yep, okay, so there, I'm just gonna do four. And I'm gonna grab another wire guardian really quick. We're doing so, so much faster than I thought. <laughs> So I only had one wire guardian ready. It really is a really fast project. I use those handy photo keepers um, to store a lot, like lots of my beads. They're from the scrapbook section. Okay, so I went through one side of the wire guardian. I turn and go through the other side. And um, I'm pinching it to hold the thread so it stays in the well. I don't remember if I mentioned that last time, but that really helps get the thread to fit through it. And then just pick up five beads here. So I've got five beads on the needle. I'm going to skip the next five. And go through the sixth bead. It's heading down toward, heading down toward the pendant. There's that. I'm going to repeat that three more times for, for my length here. There's five. Skip five. And go through the sixth bead, hopefully. <laughs> there we go. And like I was saying before, if you um, if you like this look, awesome. But if you want to, you could try different counts and see for different looks what you like. I'm going through the sixth bead. I skipped five. All right, so I reached the bottom and I'm going to just keep going through all the beads here. I'll stitch through all those. And this is already pretty strong, but um, in the handout, you'll notice that it, it offers an opportunity to go back up and reinforce this whole thing. And it's okay if you run out of thread, because um, you can add these repeats up here, these spins make a really great place to weave in. But what I've done so far is I've just gone down through my chain of beads here, and I'm exiting from the last rondeau. I'm pick up two more tens and go through the other hole on that super duo. So it looks like that. And then we you know what I would probably do is come back up through this side. And I didn't do this on the last one because I wasn't sure how much time we had, but you know, it's good to reinforce it. 
if you've got the working length especially. And I have lots of thread left on this side, so all I'm doing is just going back up through all those beads for the chance to come up here and reinforce this connection. So let's see, we're at, we're at 3.52. Um, does anyone have any questions about weaving in up here or wants to see that? Anyone wants to see how to do it that way? Danielle, I think you're good with that. But um, we do have a few people who are wondering if you wouldn't mind adding a clasp. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. So I'm using a bindings pack for this one. But any clasp will work. You can use anything you'd like. So I just grabbed a jump ring. That's a five millimeter jump ring. And so opening and closing jump rings, I tend to use two tools. I use these kind of square nose ones, flat square nose and bent nose. But chain nose pliers are just fine. This is just kind of my style, what works for my hands. But I open the, uh, the jump rings laterally. Makes it really easy to see what I'm doing. And pick up that lobster claw. That attached. Attached to the top of the wire guardian. So that's just this little section here. I'm just going, just going under it. Let that hang. And then close it. When you close your jump ring, if you get that snap, you know you've got it. And what I was doing there, wiggling it, was work kind of like work hardening the metal. You don't want to overdo that, but it makes it stronger. And there it is. And on the other side, all you would do is just put some put some jump rings. So, so for example, on this one, I did that exact same thing. But on this side, I used, so the findings pack comes with like a bunch of different sizes and I graduated them up and down because I thought it looked cool. So there's the five, the six, the eight, to the six, to the five. It might even be like a four millimeter now that I see it next to the six. But yeah, so you get the idea. So many things you can do. It's a potential there. I hope that it's been inspiring to, this project has been inspiring and you guys have liked it. Danielle, I think this class is the one most people are going to try and uh, one-up you, uh, trying yeah. a whole bunch of different ways, and we'll look forward to seeing that. But I know you still have some more information from today. Oh, you mean for, um, that's right. So next week, the 26th of March, we usually have class every Friday. Um, next week, we're taking off for spring break, and then we will be back on April 2nd with a really fun project that you can use any beads on, all you need is a tube of size 10 seed beads and you've got it, any of your, so I'm wearing one right now that I made with some gemstones from the strand wall. And this is one of the positive intentions, like charms that I found. I don't remember the name of the gemstone, but it's from the, from the strand wall and it came with four different kinds, any beads that you can use. And uh, Carmi, what do you think, should I try to, do we have time for the video? Uh, I, uh, Raina's shaking her head, so I said, let's yes. try it. <laughs> All right, so we made kind of like a get you excited about April 2nd's class video showing some of the designs that um, we have made in this style. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to, bear with me, I'm learning here. Um, probably need to join audio. So let me mute this one. We can hear you, I think. Oh, awesome. Okay. 
Here we go. All right. And here we go. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, yeah. there is an echo. There's an echo. I probably need to leave audio over yeah. here. Let's see. Bottom left hand corner. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're good now. I had to leave the other camera. Thanks for bearing with me on that. I've never tried this before. But here we go. Um, April 2nd, that's our class um, coming up. And um, I'm really excited to get to see you guys then. And I'd like to wish you a great rest of your Friday night and, and a great weekend. Thanks so much, everybody. <laughs> Bye.